Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Molly Pope Art. This is a tutorial on how to draw six different types of mushrooms using pencil and pen. Uh, we're first going to be drawing a red fly agaric mushroom. Those are the little red mushrooms that are uh, poisonous but they are so cute and you see them a lot in cottage core or folklore. Um, so they're red and they have creamy yellow stems and the little creamy yellow little bumps on the top. So these are the mushrooms you see a lot with um, little fairies maybe in um, illustrations. And what we're going to be doing first is you're going to begin drawing your red fly agaric mushroom um, by drawing a C shape that's on its side or better yet, um, half the top, half of a circle, if that makes sense to you. You're gonna draw a curved line um, to close in your half circle along the bottom of that half circle, and that, that's gonna have a slight curve to it. So it's gonna come up, it's gonna be a little lower in the middle, and it's gonna swing up on both ends to meet your half uh, C-shaped that you draw be to begin with. Um, and then you're going to use a line to draw, um, uh, let's see, about an inch wide following the curve of the first line. That's the bottom of the C shape. And then you're going to draw a jagged bottom and you're gonna draw the bottom of the mushroom rim by dropping down from the front, front rim and follow along with the same curve. And then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna add little bumps on top of the mushroom. And these bumps or ridges follow the curve of the mushroom across the front and the top. So as you're adding these bumps, keep in mind you want to be, they're sort of irregular shape. They look like little pebbles almost. So irregular shape, some of them can be sort of squarish on one side. Um, they can have sort of softly, shaped um, squarish sides, but a little bit more of like a triangle shape on the top. Some can be more oval. So just kind of vary the shape and the size of these little bumps, but make sure they follow the shape of the mushroom. So all the little teeny tiny little bumps would follow that little um, curve along the bottom of the mushroom. So I'm using a Bic mechanical pencil for all of these drawings, I love these pencils because if you need more lead, you can just punch, you know, push on the eraser end and more lead comes out. And they're a nice um, fine tip for you to get a little bit more pre precision drawing in your drawing. Um, and then once I get all of the initial pencil line lines drawn, um, I go back over the um, pencil lines with a with a fine tip um, graphic pen and those the pen I'm using is by Master's Touch and those are found at Hobby Lobby and this is a 0 0.1 size so once you get that initial pencil drawing done you're gonna go back over the entire drawing and fill in with um, the um, ink pen. And you're gonna use that ink pen to shade around all those little bumps, the C-curve, um, the stem of the mushroom, and add little shading under the cap as well.
The next mushroom that we are going to begin drawing is a morel mushroom. These are also known as sponge mushrooms. Um, these are the ones that people really hunt for in the spring and highly prize uh, as far as good eating. Um, so to begin drawing your morel mushroom, you want to draw a soft, rounded triangle shape with a flat bottom. So <clears throat> you want to draw a middle line like you drew for the red fly and then you're going to add the stem and a jagged base and you're going to start drawing um, odd shapes to create the pockets in your morale. Um, the smaller mushroom is basically the larger mushroom just in miniature and the shapes that go within the head of the mushroom are sort of softly rounded squares rectangles and triangles and you want to leave some of so these little areas are little pockets in the mushroom um, they're sort of they look like you want to leave a little bit of space in between all of these spaces and that would be the the white space that you would see on your paper would actually be the part of the morel that would be raised and the little shapes that you're drawing are meant to be the little pockets of the morel mushroom so once we draw those shapes you're going to add a little bit of shading in the interior of those little pockets to make them appear to be incest in in inset and recessed in the mushroom in the body of that morel mushroom so you can use your pencil to shade um, you can also use your um, your uh, pen to go back in and sort of shade some of those areas a little bit by making the bottoms or certain parts of the mushroom look thicker than others
The next mushroom that you're going to be drawing is an African Amanita. These are little, I think they look, remind me of little button mushrooms. However, they have the little lumps and bumps like the red fly agarics do. Um, and the shape of these is just um, what I would call an egg shape with kind of a flattened bottom and mushrooms always change shape from the time they come out of the ground um, into the end of their life cycle. They're all continuously growing and changing shape. So, but to begin this shape, you want to have um, an egg shape with a line through the middle and that just helps you to be able to balance your mushroom. And you're gonna start drawing um, smaller bumps using the same process for the morel, with, which are softly rounded squares. Um, they can be a sort of triangular shape with um, kind of softly rounded edges. And the bumps and the lumps go out beyond the lines of the top of the, in the sides of the mushrooms. So kind of notice that as you're drawing these um, amanitas, those lumps and bumps go above the um, oval shape that you drew um, initially, that oval shape. And then you can use your pen to refine those lumps and bumps and darken them a little bit on the bottoms to create sort of shadows. And you're gonna wanna shade under the stem and the stems on these are a little bit thicker than they are on the other mushrooms if you notice them. So you can use your marker, your pen, to add lots of shading under the head of the mushroom and down into the stem of the mushroom. The next mushroom that we're gonna be drawing is an inky cap mushroom. These are mushrooms that sort of, um, they're very peculiar and different. And as the mushroom decomposes, they release black inky substance from the tips and the um, mushroom starts to curl up and out as it is decomposing and ending its lifespan. So to begin the inky cap mushroom, you're gonna draw a deep upside down U shape. And you're gonna connect to that U shape with a curved line. Um, and then you're gonna draw a curved stem once again. So each of our stems have a little bit of curve to them. It makes them look a little bit more realistic and lifelike um, rather than having everything completely stick straight. Um, anytime you're drawing, um, a little bit of a curve to whatever it is you're drawing natural wise um, gives it more realism. So you're going to close the back side of the mushroom by drawing a curved line opposite the, ca the cap and then you're going to draw lines out from the stem radiating out from the stem and you're going to use these lines to add small pointed and curved lines up and out. The small version of this mushroom is um, simpler and they don't have the curved lines pointing up on the caps just yet. So again, it's an upside down U shape, um, very deep. And then when you do your shading with your pen, if you'll notice, um, I used nice soft sort of sketchy lines um, for the inky cap and used um, sort of a cross hatching technique, which is um, exactly what it sounds like. You make small little marks one way and then you come across that those little marks the opposite way and it gives you a really nice shading technique with your pen. And the stem, your those lines on the stems kind of mimic um, the shape of the stem so they follow um, that soft little curve of the stem, your lines, you want to mimic that. Um, there's a little bit of cross hatching, a little bit fainter around the cap and definitely underneath uh, the cap, on the underside of the cap, 
Um, I've used a lot more heavier shading under there to really show that that cap is um, a recessed area and so you want to add a lot more depth and a lot more shading with you know deeper color and a little bit heavier hand on the underside of that inky cap. The fifth mushroom that we are going to be drawing is a parasol mushroom. And it is called that, in my opinion, because it kind of looks like an umbrella. So consider that shape when you are beginning your sketching for that mushroom. So you wanna begin by drawing a half circle, but really bump out the top of the mushroom. And you're gonna continue with a longer stem than the previous mushrooms and you're going to add a small curve to this stem also. You're gonna be, begin adding detail by um, adding sort of a little, the top is a little bit bumped out, I guess you could say, and you're gonna um, radiate those lines, um, sort of the top is a little bit more narrow, but it's kind of a softly rounded sort of square shape and then it really extends out on either side, left and right. And you add little marks um, a little bit higher up than the edge of the mushroom <clears throat> edge to really show that it looks like it's kind of a, has like a thick cap on it. That's the goal for this mushroom is sort of an umbrella shape, sort of rounded square at the top and then the stem has a little bit of a wider base and uh, the technique I used to shade for this mushroom was a little bit of cross hatching on the mushroom cap and um, underneath I really wanted to show that there was a lot of shading under the cap um, in the gills of the mushroom so those gills next to the stem got quite a bit of shading under there and um, for the stem the smaller mushroom is kind of just a miniature version with less detail and the stem I used um, a shading detail um, technique which is using little tiny pin dots with my pen um, and that will kind of give you um, if you're strategic about where you place those dots you can get a really beautiful shading technique by making the dots heavier in certain areas and lighter in another and further down the stem I just used sort of lines that come from the outside of the edge towards the middle of the stem on each side to the left and right of the stem and that gives a really nice effect and makes the stem look like it is more of a cylinder shape and um, a rounded object. Uh, the base of the mushroom gets nice um, 
kind of say a combination of the radiating uh, lines that come in towards the middle and a little bit of the dots to give um, a lot of detail. And the last and final six mushroom that we're going to draw is a chanterelle mushroom. Um, these to me were a little bit harder. I'm not sure why. Um, I typically draw the red fly agaric mushroom and those type of mushrooms. So this one was a little bit harder. Hope maybe you'll find it easier. But to draw your chanterelle, you're going to draw a simple cloud-like shape. And you're going to add a base that is wider coming out from under the mushroom cap. Um, so it's gonna come out wider and then it's gonna narrow down to smaller on the bottom. And you're gonna be adding curved lines that come out from the middle of the chanterelle. Um, and it should look like there's a depression in the middle of the mushroom. These mushrooms are typically um, sort of a bowl shape in that they're not very deep in the middle but there is a little bit of a depression in the middle, um, so they kind of fold down um, into the middle and then sort of widen out and flatten out and sort of flare out and the edges sort of curve downwards a little bit. So um, you wanna add close lines together um, on the stem following the shape of the stem just to give you this chanterelle some dimension and sort of that saucer shape. I also am going to be adding a drawing for um, a how-to packet on my Pinterest page under um, a tutorial folder, and my name on Pinterest is Molly M. Pope, so you can find that on my Pinterest page and print out this how-to um, and how to draw these mushrooms, and I hope you try this. Um, this, to me, was a lot of fun, and if you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And if you learn something, please like and subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. See you all soon.